Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Plugins 4D. Today we're going to be looking at the Jet Fluids plugin. To install the Jet Fluids plugin, come up to the Plugins 4D menu, go down to Plugins 4D Manager, and then at the bottom you will see Jet Fluids. Jet Fluids is available to all Basic and Pro Bundle users, and will also be available if you have the demo. To install this, simply click the checkbox, and then click Install at the bottom. This dialog will then appear to tell you that you need to delete a plugin if you already have it. So if you've already previously downloaded this plugin, and perhaps we've done an update to it, then you'll need to close down Cinema 4D and delete this folder, and then restart Cinema 4D twice. So just make a note of that, and find it wherever you've set it in your preferences, plugins, and delete that plugin if it exists. So you simply click OK, and now we just restart Cinema 4D twice. And now if we go to the Plugins 4D Manager again, We'll notice at the top that the Jet Fluids has been installed, but it requires a restart. So we'll just restart one more time. And now we'll see that the Fluids options are available in the Plugins 4D menu. So let's just get started with this. Let's create a new scene. And we'll have a look here. It creates a fluid and an emitter. Now if you want to find out more information about what Jet Fluids is, again, come up to Plugins 4D, go to Plugins 4D Manager, and just click on this little icon right here and it will bring up a website for the jetfluids.com and this will tell you a little bit about what this plugin is if we scroll down a bit we'll see that Jet, uh, Jet Fluids is a Cinema 4D plugin based on the Jet Framework so let's click on the Jet Framework and this is an open source MIT licensed version of Fluid Dynamics written by Du Yip Kim I hope I'm saying your name right there and he's got a book out here, and if you want to support him, you can go and purchase the Fluid Engine Development book. And that will tell you exactly how all the code works. And you can even get the code from the GitHub repository. So what we've done is we've integrated this into a Cinema 4D plugin, since we thought the book was fantastic, and we wanted to give this to everybody else as well to use. So let's jump back in and start using this. So first, I have a Fluid object, and I have an emitter. I'm actually going to create something for an emitter first. I'm just going to create a sphere, resize it to 50, and I'm going to place it inside the box here, just near the top. I'm going to resize that a bit smaller again. And so this is where the fluid is going to come from. And just to make things organized a bit more, I'm going to put it under the emitter. It doesn't have to be under the emitter, but it does need to be added to the emitter. So with the emitter selected, drag and drop the sphere into the body. There's these options here. Enable just means that the emitter is enabled. One shot means it will just produce the amount of fluid on the very first frame and it won't generate any more from this emitter. You don't need to add the fluids into here. Uh, if there's none there, then it'll just use the one that's within the scene that it's in. But it does allow you to have emitters work on multiple fluids, which we'll go over in a more advanced tutorial later on. So now we just click on fluid. And the defaults here are to create a grid level set liquid. We have other options under here to create a hybrid. So this one here will generate a, a polygonal mesh that will be shown in the scene. These others are particle based. And we'll go over those in a second. So let's just run the simulation here. Now if you want to see how long it's taking to do the simulations, you can come up to Script, Console, and Plugins 4D. You'll see some output at the bottom how long it's taking per frame. And at the end it'll tell you how long it took to do the entire simulation. So we're getting about two seconds per frame for this. And if we just come up to the object here, you can actually hide the emitters in the viewport. And it does not respect whether it's hidden or not, it will always use it. It will only exclude it from the simulation if you go onto the emitter and turn off enable. You can see the lifetime uh, live real-time preview coming in the viewport here and if you want you can add materials to it if you need it to be smoother you can add a to a subdivision surface so this is all still simulating at the moment as well I'm just going to stop the simulation there and click on fluid and click stop and just play that back so there's the fluid there 
And we only got to about frame 22, so let's just set that to 22. And now we can just see that fluid in the viewport. Okay, now we, we may want to do this with particles and render using the thinking particles. So let's just show how we can do this using particles now. So I'm just going to bring that back, delete that subdivision surface. And on the fluid, I'm going to change the type to hybrid flip. Now we need to clear our cache. This is just showing the object that was just previously cached. This is not really particularly useful. We can just click clear. And we need to recache this again. Now, if I just start caching right now, nothing's going to happen because for these methods currently, you need to have at least one collider in your scene. And you'll see a message down here, flip, pick, and apic must all have at least one fluid collider in the scene. So that's these ones here. This will be fixed in a, an update coming shortly, but uh, for now, just add another object into your scene and just right click and from jet fluids, choose collider. And then on the collider, you also need to tell it what scene it's on. So we just drag the scene into the jet fluid scene. And just to make this organized a bit better, I'm just going to drop this under the scene as well. So that just means we can we can drag it to the scene around if we need to drag it around. So now we have at least one collider in the scene, and our sphere is at the top. So now when the sphere comes down, it's going to hit this other sphere. So let's click on the fluids, and I'm just going to start caching. And we'll see the particles appearing in the scene there. Now, the rendering of these particles, what you're seeing, is just a fake visualization of what the particles. If I was to render the scene, you would not see these particles at all. If you go to the Display tab, you'll see it's just using a gradient. And this gradient is going from the bottom of the box to the top of the box. So this allows you just to set the a fake visualization for your fluids in your scene. If you want to render these, then the workflow is to uncheck the Show Particles. And now it's going to be using thinking particles. So this is now thinking particles. So you can just look up a tutorial on how to use thinking particles and rendering those in C4D. And you'll be able to do the same thing with these in your scene. So I'm just going to actually stop that there. We'll go to fluids, object, go stop. Now when you click stop, it may take a while to stop because it may be in the middle of calculating a specific frame. So just give it some time until that clears. And now you can play that back. So that's the thinking particles. And if we want the fake version, we can click on here. Now the fake version comes in handy sometimes if you're just wanting to just do a larger simulation. And you can actually make it kind of look a little bit uh, interesting if you want. So an example here is this simulation here. This is all just using the fake particles. The fake, fake particle color, I should say. But if you want to do a real rendering, again, you, you would just uncheck that checkbox. And you would get it looking, uh, rendering it how you ever want it in your scene. Okay, now if you want to have continual pouring of particles, then under the emitter, all you need to do is turn off one shot. And now, if I, well let's just play that first, what how it looks. You can see there that there's no more particles coming down from the top there. It's got one shot is disabled, so instead of just doing one batch of particles for the emitter, it's just going to continually put out new particles every frame. So we come up to fluid, and we'll leave that on the flip method, and we'll just clear that and we'll start caching again. So this is now going to put out particles every single frame. So this is in real time on this computer. Now this computer is a a 10 core i i7. Um, however I've had a uh, very good performance just on a 4 core Mac as well. So uh, the Fluids plugin itself has been uh, set up to use all your cores except for two of them. So you'll still be able to have responsive in C4D. Your computer won't lock up. You'll still be able to do everything you need because you'll leave at least two CPUs uh, for your system itself. But here we can see that particles are continually being added to the scene and being poured down onto this sphere. I'm just going to stop that. Now the other options down here that we haven't gone over yet are just the size. So this is the size of the box. In other applications they call it the fluid domain. And this is the cell size. This box of 100 is going to have cell sizes of 2. 
So there's going to be 50 cells going across and 50 cells up and 50 cells that way. I won't go over use compressed linear system. Uh, however, the viscosity, it makes it more honey-like. So if your fluid is splashing around like water, that would be at zero. But if you want it to be more like a bit of honey, uh, then you just crank it up to one and the fluid simulation will keep the fluid more together. And the last val uh, value down here is global compensation. So if the simulation, if the object that has been animated comes down, sometimes it might dissipate, so there'll be less fluid within the domain, within the box here. So if you see that happening and you find that you want to make sure it preserves the volume and the amount of fluid within the box during the simulation, then you can click global compensation. And that will effectively try to maintain all the fluid within the box. Okay, so that's it for today. And we'll just leave you now with some of the videos from here. And we've got two other videos down here. This one here, you can see the bunny that's got high viscosity.